Romans, the eighth chapter. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, but if by the Spirit you have put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be also glorified with him. Another reading from our gospel text. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many, many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Of all scriptures that is written for our learning, our meditating and inwardly digesting, throughout all of the scriptures, including what is written in the Apocrypha, of all we see, we don't find words quite as harsh as the words I'm going to say to you today. If you look at all of the people that were put to death in scripture, this is a reality, of all the people who were put to death in scripture, the vast majority of them were put to death by God. God, of course, puts to death those who sin against him, and I've got bad news, we all do. In the Old Testament, we see God who slay his own people, Israel, by sending out serpents that were on fire to bite, to burn, and to kill. But it's not as if God does these things simply because he is bored or simply because he, t he uh, torments and tortures his people. It's, no it's nothing like that at all. In fact, you will see nine times out of ten when these people lose their lives, it's because they have fleed from God and to idols. You shall die, God says. When Eve and Adam ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, from that point they would die. And people have been dying ever since. But with all of those words, all of those words, words of death, words of despair for the sinner, all of those words, none are as scary, none are as devastatingly true as these words. When Jesus says, I never knew you. Those words are the scariest words in all of Scripture. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Never knew you. Those words certainly sent a chill up my spine. Then I think, well, what of those heirs of God? What of those heirs? Because we have uh, the warning here as well. To, beware, to be, uh, be aware of false prophets who come to us in sheep's clothing, both inwardly ravenous wolves. We have to be on watch for these false prophets. And it's interesting for a pastor to say this because most times false prophets come as pastors. And I don't mean whether or not you like the pastor. That doesn't matter. You can dislike him or like him. That does not mean that he's a false.
false prophet. You will know a prophet by the words that he teaches and the words that he preaches. In that, we are always sanctified. We are always made holy. We are always given over to God because it's not about the pastor. Pastors constantly have to get over themselves. If pastors don't get over themselves, then they get in front of the word. If they get in front of the word, then the word will crush them on its way to the ears of the hearer. That's just the reality. So first rule of thumb for pastors, get over yourselves. You're not as important as we think that you are. We call that self-importance. On the other hand, if you have someone who perhaps dresses in the finest silks but does not preach God's word, then there you have a false prophet, one who leads them astray, one who would take them away from the inheritance that God gives to his people. Those are the people who follow false prophets that Christ says to them, depart from me, I never knew you. So on that side, we see that hell has truly come to earth for them. On the other hand, for those that hear God's word, those who inwardly digest God's word, those who believe on God's word, he has made us heirs this side of heaven and on earth. So we have two truths over here and over here. We have the healthy tree that bears healthy fruit. We have the diseased tree that bears ill fruit. What is the great difference? Where is the caveat? Where is the great chasm between the two? And it's simply this. Christ never knowing you and Christ knowing you from before you were placed in the womb of your mother. Here's the difference. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And then this. Gavin Matthew Mize, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in that, God literally writes his name on his hand. Literally what the Hebrew says. He writes our names on his hands as if forever. The Lamb's book of life is ink from the blood of God's hand book itself is God's hand. That way every time God looks at his hand, he remembers you and the covenant that he gave you. He remembers you and your baptism. And, he, it is, and when it is printed so permanently on his hand, he therefore says, I always know him. I always know her. These are my healthy trees. These are my healthy fruit. To those who do evil works in my name, hell hath no fury like God himself. I never knew you. My hands are clean of your blood and death. You have done this to yourself. You've heard me tell the story of the shepherd. I'm going to make an example of the, of the two here. You've heard me tell of the shepherd who fell asleep. When he fell asleep, one sheep decided to run and jump off the cliff. You can look this up. It happened in the country of Turkey. One sheep jumped off the cliff. When one sheep jumped off the cliff, another sheep followed him, and another, and another, and another, until every single sheep had jumped off the cliff and were dashed on the rocks below, hundreds of sheep dead. So I ask this question. Who was the false prophet? Or who was the one responsible, rather? The first sheep? Or the
the shepherd who fell asleep. It's the shepherd who fell asleep. He carries every debt of that sheep on his back. That's what it means to be a pastor. So I ask from this pulpit that you pray for me, your shepherd and your pastor. Because I promise you this, the devil works much, much harder on me than he does you. Tenfold, if not a hundred. Because if he can get me to fall asleep, if he can get me to lead any of us sheep astray, then one will follow. Pray for me. Pray that I do not fall asleep and that I continue to preach God's word and that I actually am forced to get out of my own way so that God's word can be proclaimed. Because here's the reality, and here's where everything bridges together. This is the true word of God that I proclaim to you today. That in that baptism, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the one who writes our names on God's hand. And as he does so, we are brought into this familial atmosphere. This familial atmosphere is this, simply this. We have been adopted as sons. By Christ's own body and blood, we have been brought into a family. And in that family, we are brought in through the door of baptism. In that family, we are fed at the family table in his body and his blood right there. And in this family, we are brought in by water and of flesh and of blood. And therefore, when that happens, we are called this, heir. Adoption by God as heirs. If we are adopted as sons, then we are brothers with Christ. And if we are brothers with Christ, then we share in his inheritance. If we share in his inheritance, then what does Christ promise us? You will be with me today. That's the very thing that binds healthy trees with good fruit to this right here. The great familial cry, Abba, Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. May our Lord continuously give us his good nutrients into his tree so that we may be good fruit for God. But forever remember this. You are granted eternal life, brought into the family of God. And if, if you have been brought into the family of God, then you have been made heirs. And if you have been made heirs, what does that even mean? What do you inherit? Christ says,
surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and 